Hi, I'm Andrew Pierce with the EPICS program at Purdue University. In this module, we're going to talk about some of the resources available to you as a student in the EPICS program to help you be successful in your project. So first, we're going to talk about some of the resources available on the web, and I'll try and pull these up and walk them through with you one by one as we go. So the first thing to know about is our website. That's the place you can go to find forms and templates and resources and sort of all the things you need to do your project, as well as links to the team websites. So each team has a website that's maintained by the team webmaster. So we're going to go ahead and pull up the Purdue Epics page and um, point out some of the things that you'll need to know. First of all, there are drop downs here across the top with a lot of the things you need. And the one that doesn't show up down here are these role specifics. So if you have a role on a team and you want to learn a little bit more about the role or look for documents specific to that role, you can find those here. So a good example in the financial officer link here is where you'll find the budget form. So if you need to pull up things like that, go ahead and find those role specific tabs. The rest of the links are more general for things that you'll need as a student in Epic. So you have the um, Epics Purdue things here, which are more external facing or things about Epics. The team documents, which are documents you'll need um, on a team level, such as the project evaluation rubric. The individual documents, and those are a lot of the things you'll use on a regular basis. So this is where you can find the syllabus, the course milestones, how you get into your notebook, instructions for your reflections, your professional development hours. That's where you'll find things about um, getting your PDH credits, the individual evaluation rubric and information on senior design if you're a senior. In addition to that, there are more resources here along the side, things like our 3D printing request form or information about the labs. So that's where you can go to look for this material. As we go back and take a look at the next resource available is the Epic's YouTube site. You can link that here off the main Epic's website by going to professional development hours. There you'll see the schedule with the different um, types of activities for uh, PDH is available to you and then for online activities you'll see the link to the lecture to the YouTube channel. So if we go ahead and head there you'll see there are a number of different playlists here. If you're doing a module, anything that's listed as a module like the one you're doing now, there will be a number of videos in it. You need to complete all of those to get one PDH credit. But if you're doing other credits like um, some of our recorded lectures you'll see they're listed with say one of three, two of three, three of three. So you need to do those three together. This one is a two part. And those are a little bit longer. And that's where you can find a lot of those activities you'll need. So that's our YouTube channel. You can choose to follow the channel and that'll let you pull those right up in your own YouTube account. So going forward, the next thing to know about is SharePoint. Again, this links from the main Epics page. So if we jump back there, and you see the big links here on the top. You have My Epics and SharePoint. Those are two of the big ones that you'll use routinely. So if we take a look at SharePoint, and you may have to log into this when you come in, um, you'll see all of the teams listed here across the top. So you'll want to find your team. So for example, if you're in the ISBVI team, you can open that up. And within that, the main things you'll be looking for are the documents over here in the side. So if you open up your project documentation, those are things that should stay with the team over time. For example, pieces of code or CAD models, work that you want to stay. And then the um, semester documentation are the things that are specific only to that semester. So a good example of that would be a design review PowerPoint. That's only really needed for that one specific semester. So SharePoint works by a check-in, check-out system. So if you open one of the documents, um, there are folders in here that you can put things in. And when you want to actually go to work on something, click on the box here, click on more, and check out. Now if you actually just open the document, you can read it, but you can't edit it. And some of them, especially Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint documents will prompt you to check them out once you open them. So you can do it that way as well. So that's a useful resource to you. The next one will be My Epics. So if you open up My Epics here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in with the student login so you see what your view will look like. There are a number of things to see here. You can see the team members of your own team. You can view the learning activities. So this is where those PDH credits are found if you want to enroll in different activities. You can always go view activities and you'll see a lot of different things come in here as the semester goes on. Oops. And um, finally your peer evaluation. So 
Uh, you'll be asked at mid-semester and the end of the semester to review the people you work with on a regular basis, and you can do that here. Uh, so there's my epics, and then the next would be um, your team email list. Now, a lot of teams don't use these much anymore. They use um, things like GroupMe instead, but you do still have a team email available to you, and that's epics your team's short name. So not Indiana School for the Blind, but the ISBVI team, so that short acronym at ecn.purdue.edu. Next resource available to you are the people who are here to support you. So Dr. Oaks, our director, is here. You can meet with him at any time. Those of you going through Engineering 133 or on one of his teams will certainly meet him. Uh, myself, the academic administrator. Pam Brown, our program coordinator, can help you out with any registration problems. If you have problems with your community partner, she's a good resource to contact them. Um, Jorge Martinez is our lab manager, so anything you need in the lab, supplies, help with equipment, um, any kind of tutorials, things like that, he's a great resource. And Anna Rainwater is our secretary. She's the person who you'll see when you enter the office, and she can help you out, especially with ordering supplies for your teams. In addition to those permanent staff, we have undergraduate TAs and graduate TAs um, who are here to help you all the time. So the graduate TAs post their office hours and they'll be in your labs or you can send them a, a note and uh, email and they can contact you. And our undergraduate TAs are usually in the lab evenings and weekends to help you out with supplies and with your projects in the lab. So the next resource available to you is our actual labs. There are a number of labs. The first is our main lab space, Armstrong 1098. There you'll find prototyping equipment for electronics, large project storage, and a locker for your team where you can store your supplies. Our build lab is across the hall from there in ARMS 1101. That's where you can find saws and drills, scrap wood, things like that where you can do dirty work. Our computer lab next door to that, Armstrong 1095, is an ECN lab, so you can go in there. Um, there is printing there available to you that's off quota, but please be respectful of that use. We have 3D printers in our lab you can request through the website. And also the AFL is available to you as a full service machine and wood shop, but you have to register and be approved to use that and pass their safety quizzes. So keep that in mind. You can't just show up and expect to get work done there. Um, the next bit would be project supplies. So um, all of the projects that you do in Epics are supported by corporate sponsorships. They help pay for all of the materials you use to build your project. So if you have a sponsor for your team, please be sure to recognize them in your design review slides. Um, and anything you do publicly. Um, the lab supplies, we keep a number of common items, like screws, bolts, resistors, capacitors, things like that, in the lab for your use. So you can make use of those things anytime you need them. Um, if you run out of something, if you need something to be supplied, or if we don't supply something that you think we should, make sure you let Jorge know. If you have a problem with any of our equipment, make sure you let him know as well. Then you can also buy supplies for your team. So most of your projects will do really specific things and you have to order supplies. We buy a lot of things through Amazon or we'll go uh, to Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, places like that to make purchases. Uh, please do not pay for anything out of your own pocket. We cannot do personal reimbursements. So if you need to buy something for your team, complete the purchase request form that you can find on our website. And then you can either check out a credit card if you're going to buy something in person, or the Epic staff can place online orders for you. Uh, so team budgets, that money that comes in from the corporate sponsorships for your team, each team is given $200 to start the semester just to get you going. What we expect is that you will submit a budget using the budget form during the first four weeks of the semester to ask for the money you need to buy supplies for the rest of that semester. Those are nominally due in the fourth week of the semester, um, but we will accept them as long as money remains. Now, if at week four everyone brings their budgets and your team brings yours later on in the semester, there may not be any money left. So please make sure you do that in those first four weeks so that we can plan. Um, and the typical year-long team budget averages around $1,200. So if you're wondering if you're way above that um, ballpark, you can still turn that budget in, but we'll probably suggest you try and find some external funding to help cover that. There are uh, grants available through the Office of Engagement, so if you're going to be spending any kind of significant amount of money, we really recommend you apply for those grants. They're there for you as students to do engagement work in the community, exactly like what we're doing in EPICS. Um, so our labs are there for EPIC students only, so please don't let other people into the labs without permission. Most of the time, if you have a personal project or if you know someone who wants to use our labs, we'll grant permission, 
but we need to make sure they get the proper safety forms completed. Our labs are a privilege to use. So just because you're in the class doesn't mean you get to use them if you abuse them. So if you don't take care of things, put the uh, supplies away when you're done with them and take care of the equipment, you can be excused from the lab permanently. There's no charge for printing in our computer lab with the understanding that that is intended for use toward completing your project. All of the money that we have donated through corporate sponsors that pay for that printing are intended to go toward delivering services to the community. So if you go and print 200 pages of your electrical engineering textbook in the lab, you are stealing money from the community partners. Um, so please don't do that. Um, those are really intended only for Epic's work. So again, make sure you swipe your ID card on the first day so we can get your uh, number registered. And the thing we really wanna stress when you're working in the labs is to have a safety first mindset. Um, it is a shared space. So when we look at the size of the Epics lab, it is a big lab, but we have more than a thousand students over the course of a school year working in that lab. And with all of you working in there at different times of the day, using different equipment, if you leave things out, you don't put tools away, it becomes chaotic very quickly and it can be difficult to get work done. So if you wanna be able to find a hammer and the drawer labeled hammer when you go to look for it, you have to put it back there when you're done or the next person won't be able to find it either. And our labs are really a great gift to enable us to do projects that make a difference in our community. So please take care of them so we can continue to do that. So in summary on resources, the Epics Lab provides you a lot of different resources. You have to be proactive and seek them out, especially those human resources. If you're really struggling with a particular thing in class, we probably have a TA, a staff member, or a connection somewhere in the university that can help you. But if you don't seek them out, we won't know to help you. Please make use of both the online and the physical tools. They're there to support you as a student in the program. And the TAs, the advisors, and the staff are really here to help you. So please come and talk to us.